Having completed our lengthy overview of consciousness, the light of Christ in priesthood, we can now revisit our solution to the conundrum of the sign of the Son of Man. How will the planets be removed from their current positions in the solar system and return to the vicinity of Earth and resume their former positions as part of the polar configuration? We know that in ancient times, planets were commanded by prophets to move and act, and the planets, as conscious beings, were compelled to obey. The planets of the sign of the Son of Man will also be commanded by a latter-day prophet and will obey in return. We offer the following scenario as to how this will all come to pass, based upon what we have already set forth in our videos. To begin with, before the planets can return to reform the sign of the Son of Man, the seal to the 7,000 years, the last dispensation, must be opened. As we learned from the Lord's answers to Joseph Smith's questions concerning the book of Revelation, the seven seals on the back of the books seen by John represented the things of each of the 7,000 years of the temporal history of the world. The seventh thousand years includes the restoration, the second coming, the gathering of Israel, the millennium, and the end of the world. The opening of the seal, of course, begins the seventh thousand years and the start of these sequence of events. The seal is opened in chapter eight of the book of Revelation, and the events chronicled in the book are to occur after the opening of the seal and before the coming of Christ. The seventh seal has already been opened. It was opened on April 3, 1836, when Moses, Elias, and Elijah bestowed the keys of this dispensation upon Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery. The bestowal of the keys of the kingdom meant that all the necessary power and authority had been restored to man to accomplish the great events of the seventh thousand years. It also meant that the great and dreadful day of the Lord was near, even at the doors. The question is then, after more than a century and a half, how near is the great and dreadful day of the Lord? The revelation of John provides some context as to the timing of this great event and its relationship to the opening of the seventh seal. John recorded that immediately after the opening of the seventh seal, there was silence in the heaven about the space of a half an hour. Scholars, both inside the church and outside, are at a loss as to the explanation of this verse. Most non-LDS scholars agree that the half hour represents a short time. Of course, short is a comparative term, and the scholars provide no context as to whether hours, days, months, years, or even centuries are contemplated by the term half an hour. LDS scholars do not even attempt to explain the statement. 2019's course of study for Sunday School, Primary and Individuals and Families is the New Testament. The manual avoids the verse altogether. The closest the church comes to an explanation is a statement of Apostle Orson Pratt made concerning a similar verse in section 88 of the Doctrine and Covenants. The verse follows the appearance of the great sign in heaven, the sign of the Son of Man. Elder Pratt opined that he didn't know the duration the Lord meant by half an hour but reasoned that it could refer to an extensive period of time. Having related all this, we know what the term half hour means in the Lord's parlance. We have pointed out earlier that the Lord uses a system of sacred time. The prophetic year, 
The year of perfection was a period of 12 months of exactly 30 days each. The prophetic month consisted of 30 days. This is the basis of the years, months, and days expressed in the writings of Daniel and Revelation. Full periods, years, months, days, or in our case, an hour, signified wholeness and perfection. Half periods signified cutting short time, incompleteness or imperfection. The half hour then signifies a relatively short period of time, one that is incomplete and imperfect.